Everybody, welcome to the Logical Shaman Podcast. Got a great show for you today. It's going to be an intense one. It's going to be serial. Where's the camera? It's right here. This is a very serial conversation. I hope you're ready. I hope you got your big boy pants on. <clears throat> today, we are talking about the number one thing that holds people back in personal growth and development. The number one thing that holds people back in their life. What is it? What do you think it might be? Again, this is just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think this is it. Let's look at what Facebook had to say. This is what some people think is the number one thing that's holding them back or holds people back. Lack of self-discipline. I can see that. Being uh, big babies. That's a big one, especially you millennials or, I don't know, whatever group we're picking on now these days. Um, themselves, yourself, might be the number one thing that holds you back. Fear of failure. That's a big one. Lack of confidence. Definitely. Victimhood mentality. I like that answer. Now, I think all of these are fine answers, and someone could do a fine show on all of these topics. I think they're all wrong. I think these are all symptoms, and I'm going to tell you where they come from. The number one thing that holds people back in life is not giving their parents full responsibility for their actions, choices, and not being honest in our relationships. And I think they're connected. They're, they're really one and the same. So what do I mean? Not holding your parents fully responsible for their actions and choices. How would that affect you and your personal growth? Well, our parents are our first example in life for how to be an adult, how to have relationships with the opposite sex, how to interact with the outside world, and how to hold yourself accountable for your mistakes. They are the model they show us, oh, I'm hitting things. They are the model that shows us how you're successful in the world, you know. Our father, if you're a man, was successful in finding a mate and having a child and surviving the world, feeding himself. Mother, the same way. If you're a daughter, they were successful at finding a mate being taken care of or working hard themselves. They are the model for what you're going to be when you grow up, consciously or subconsciously. And when we can't treat our parents fully like responsible adults, we will always embody that in our own lives and how we hold ourselves or in this case, don't hold ourselves accountable. This often happens subconsciously. It may show up as like brain fog which I'm sure you've experienced, especially when you're around uh, parents or people that you don't feel comfortable around, or especially when something comes up around your parents that you know you can't bring up or express with them. Our parents actually train us in how not to be our honest selves around them so that we don't rock the boat or question them or bring up topics that they may find uncomfortable or damning. They teach us as young children how to lie by omission and allow things to fall down the memory hole or out of acceptable conversation to the point where you might not even be able to see the issues anymore because you've made yourself blind to it and don't can't see it and you've, you've taught yourself to ignore it at all costs. And the number one thing we know as children is that our parents are the life givers and the ones with ultimate power over us so that you learn very quickly not to upset the hand that feeds or the hand that can inflict punishment on you. Here, I'm going to take these off. It's getting a, little, getting a little hot in here. So this teaches us um, out of our natural inclination as humans to have real-time relationships with people. It prevents us from even being who we really want to be 
or who we can be because we're filled with the ghosts of our parents that are constantly telling us to avoid possible landmines in the conversation or in interactions. And instead of just being in the moment with people uh, or with our actual feelings and thoughts and expressing those openly, we, we can't do it. Now, there's a book by that name, Real-Time Relationships, written by Stefan Molyneux. Combined with hitting rock bottom and reading this book, um, and I, I hit rock bottom in my personal relationship life, all kinds of elements of my life, um, it caused me to examine myself and my relationships in a way I never had before. So firstly, I was never taught how to have healthy relationships. My parents divorced when I was only five years old, so I never grew up seeing a man and a woman in a healthy and loving relationship. I never got that example. So I was very slow at learning how to date and getting girlfriends. And when I finally did start dating, I primarily found myself dating people that were liars, that were cheaters, manipulators, people that didn't have respect for me or even themselves. I found myself jumping in and out of unhealthy relationships, not knowing what love was or what I was looking for. And it often ended with me getting hurt or me emotionally hurting somebody else. When I finally did hit rock bottom, I was about 26 and breaking up with my fiance at the time because she was uh, alcoholic and abusive. And I realized I had no one I could go to for help or advice. All of my relationships felt like cardboard cutouts that would just tip over as soon as you touched them. There's nothing there. I felt like no one had my back. My parents didn't help me examine this woman or any of the women I had dated to see if they were a good person for me. Um, hell, why would I even go to my parents for advice when they had botched up their own marriage so much? And I could, you know, I could see the dysfunction in their own lives. No, thinking about going to my parents or even any of the people I called friends at the time seemed no different than jumping into uh, the game's Oblivion or Skyrim and asking an NPC in the video game what they thought I should do in real life. I could see how the conversation would play out before me, and it, I knew it wouldn't go anywhere good. I could see how empty and meaningless my parents' relationships with me and each other were, um, and it was, it was 26 years of platitudes and nice sayings, but where was the real-time relationship? Where was the loving honesty or the brutal honesty? Why was I either indifferent to going to them at best or at worst, I was afraid of even opening up to them at all. Was it my fault? I think it's important here to realize that our relationships with our parents is 90% or more created by our parents. Our parents set all the boundaries, teach us all the ways they want us to interact or not interact with them from a very young age. And they show us throughout our lives that they ex expect us and how they want our relationship to be. Now, I knew that the worst part about this feeling of the paper-thin relationships was it also meant that this is exactly what my parents wanted. This is the type of relationship they cultivated in me. So I did what any good scientist would. I had to test my hypothesis. I didn't want this to be true, and it certainly wasn't fair to me or to my parents to just assume this to be the case. So I took some time to think about what I might want to say to my parents if I was going to be honest. Stefan Molyneux's book has a great exercise in it that really showed me in stark contrast how much I had been propagandized to erase myself when talking to my parents. In the book, he says something to the effect of uh, when your mother calls and you see her name show up on the phone, before you answer, stop and ask yourself how you feel. How do you feel when you know your mother or your father wants to talk to you? Are you excited to talk to them? How, or do you feel reluctant to answer the phone? Now for me, it certainly was the latter. And then to take it further, could you be honest with your mother about how you feel in the moment? Could you tell her, not with anger, but honesty, hey, so when you called just now, uh, I felt negative emotions and I was reluctant to answer the call. Can 
we have a conversation about this and try and figure out why I feel this way. The thought of doing that terrified me even more, as it may scare you now to think about doing such a thing. So I knew I basically had to do this. I thought about it for weeks and wrote down some questions that I had for my mom and my dad, and I planned out how I was going to talk to them about these issues and about the issues I had with them and how they treated me as a child. And I was going to request for both of them to come with me to counseling to try and talk about it in a more safe space for everyone involved. Now, for me, I learned that the act itself of just learning to be honest and open with my parents has proven to be more important for my personal growth than their reactions were at the time. Um, neither one of them responded in the best manner, and I have separated myself from them for the most part. But the act of being honest and pushing through the fear I had of open communication cured me of my night terrors and sleep paralysis and opened me up to giving myself full responsibility for my choices and actions in life, which in turn allowed me to start truly growing as a person for the very first time, I think. This may seem counterintuitive, but for our parents... But our parents are our model for how we see adults and for the rest of our lives. If we can't give them full responsibility for their actions, then we can never give ourselves full responsibility. Because after all, we are adults now just like they are and were. So how could we ever be any different than them? Just to conclude with my personal story, my dad refused to go to counseling at all and actually told me that because he was proud of who I turned out to be, he was happy he had hit me and punished me as a child because that must have caused me to be the man I am today. Now, I can't begin to explain how backwards this thinking is because as I told him then, I am who I am today despite my parents' mistakes, not because of them. My mother did make an effort at least, and we had a few months of counseling, which did help me deeply in learning to be honest and open and not fear being my true self. It did, however, end abruptly when my mother revealed that she knew my father was a cheater before she ever married him, because he had cheated on her more than once earlier in their relationship. This was a huge revelation for me because I had been taught my entire life that my dad was just this amazing liar and actor. My mother had no way of knowing that he would cheat on her or abandon the family. It just came out of the blue. Whoop, never saw it coming. Now, I wasn't angry at my mother about this at the time, but it helped open up my eyes to the years of manipulation and unhealthy thinking and how this had prevented me for so long from having healthy relationships with people. In fact, my mother had taught me to not ever hold myself accountable and to always blame others. And this thinking more than anything else had been what had made it so easy for me to keep getting into unhealthy relationships and never growing out of that pattern. When I had tried to explain this to my mother during our session, uh, her and the therapist both ganged up on me and told me it was wrong for me to judge my mother. I, of course, knew this was new age bullshit, and I asked them, if that was their judgment, that it was wrong for me to judge. Well, either the contradiction dumbfounded them or it went over their heads because they didn't have anything to say to that. And so I thanked them for the time they spent with me that I was going to have to cut it short. And that marked the end of my attempts at therapy with my parents. This final session is a great example of the contradictory thinking our parents force into our brains. They want to be both judge and jury and executioner of, of us our entire lives as children. And then when we become old enough to think for ourselves and start judging their actions, well, that becomes the greatest sin and you can never judge them. They want you to think judging is both perfectly good and perfectly evil. It's no different than doublethink from the book 1984, where you must hold two opposing ideas as both being true at the same time. It creates in you a brain fog, like the one we talked about earlier, and also it prevents action and growth because nothing seems to matter in a world where things can be both true and untrue at the same time. This is the number one thing 
holding people back in their lives because it's something that is with us from such a young age and it's implanted so deeply within us that we have a hard time even seeing it or knowing it's there. And people that don't face this and who are deeply scarred as children can spend their whole lives repeating the same abusive and unhealthy patterns as their parents, never understanding why and always thinking it's this, just something wrong with me because, damn it, my parents raised me the right way. I'm just a fuck up and a failure. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're not a fuck up and you're not a failure and that your parents only have as much control over your mind and your heart and your life as you let them have. I encourage you to read the book Real-Time Relationships and examine your relationship with your parents and friends and ask yourself, are you being honest? Are you hiding your true self from other people or even from yourself? Even if you don't read the book, simply do this. The next time your mom or dad call you, stop. Ask yourself how you feel and if you want to pick up the phone. Now, you may feel great about talking to your parents, but if you feel something in the pit of your stomach and you don't know why, I challenge you with this. Just be honest and the truth will set you free. If you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and please comment below. And if you want to talk about this or any other topic, please message me and uh, we can talk on it, about it on air. Everyone have a great day.